Hello, everybody, and welcome in to eBible Fellowship's continuing Bible studies into the book of First Samuel, heard at this very same time, Monday through Friday. And we thank you for being with us wherever you are and however you're listening to us, either through eBible Fellowship's webcast audio or through Skype or perhaps through Pal Talk or even over the phone. And we pray that the Lord's blessings will be with us over the next 30 minutes or so as we now prepare to open our Bibles and introduce. Chris McCann. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Bible study, our continuing Bible study in the book of 1 Samuel. This is study number 28. And tonight we're going to start by reading 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 2, verse 7 and following. Jehovah maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are Jehovah's and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of Jehovah shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. Jehovah shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto Jehovah before Eli the priest. And uh, we're uh, back in verse 7, we're finishing up verse 7 of chapter 2. Um, where it says, Jehovah maketh poor and maketh rich. And we've spent a little time looking at the language of the Bible as God speaks of spiritual riches. And and um, he warns not to labor in order to be, uh, come rich. And, and, and that um, is a warning to each one of us. We, we should not in any way trust in our own work our own efforts when it involves spiritual things we we need to receive the gift of salvation at the hand of god he does all the work the lord jesus is the one who uh, does everything start to finish and and as a result he gets all the glory well, it goes on to say, he bringeth low and lifteth up. And we saw um, that that this follows the biblical principle that is in view in so many places in the Bible, that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And what is a proud man? Someone who is lifted up in, in, um, in his mind, in his heart. Uh, he he has uh, taken a position that um, that that is too high for him. <clears throat> and people in the world uh, do this all the time. This is the the common sin of man. Every man has struggles with pride. There is no one that uh, that hasn't um, been confronted. With this particular sin, many people have been overcome by pride, and they don't even know it. it it's so horrible and and so bad a sin that people actually think it's a good thing to have pride. And if you lack pride, well, there's there's a lot of men they uh, they wouldn't think much of you. You have to be proud. You 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 have to have uh, 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 self-esteem and and you have to think very highly of yourself or else they say, who else will? If you don't think anything of yourself, well, how do you expect anyone else to think anything of you? And I know this is the common philosophy of of the world, of man, and and, and people are constantly... Uh, telling themselves and telling others how great they are and how wonderful they are. And and this, uh, it, it fits in with 
the um, with the mindset of people, with the mindset of the sinner, where he does think very highly of himself, and and uh, if others tell him that, well, uh, that's that's great, and he's telling it to himself. But that is not the mindset of the child of God. That is not the mindset that God would have his people to uh, to have of themselves. Yes, we have to admit it is horrible modern psychology. You know, if a psychiatrist or, or today's psychologist heard the the things that that uh, I'm saying now or that believers say as a result of what they find in the Bible concerning pride, oh, they they would think it's just um, just just as bad as it can get uh, as far as mental health. How horrible! Certainly, uh, you would have extremely low self-esteem and. And you would be depressed if you thought this way. Well, you know, actually, when we learn from the Bible that we're a sinner and we're we're um, under the wrath of God, and and we we learn what the Bible says about us um, that that we're not good. There, the Bible tells us that uh, there's none good, no, not one that we're, we're not basically a good person at all. We're a dirty, rotten sinner. And, and is this, is this uh, way of thinking harmful to our mental health? And no, actually, <clears throat> as long as we, we understand that it's not just me, it, it's, it's everyone. It's everyone. It, it's my neighbors. It's the, the people at school, the people at work, the people I don't know. It, it's every one I see, whether they're a movie star, an athlete, or um, the the teacher. Every single human being it shares this same. Um, problem, which is that we are sinners, and because of our sin, well, we we uh, have greatly troubled ourselves, and and we are in rebellion against God, and all that the Bible says about our sin. Once we get that straight in our heads, this becomes the great equalizer, as far as our relationship with other people. You know, if we didn't understand this principle that that all men are sinners, that all men uh, are uh, desperately wicked and, and have de- hearts that are deceitful above all things, stony hearts of unbelief, if we didn't know that man that is... Uh, it, that is born of a woman is conceived in sin that were born speaking lies all the the very negative things that the bible tells us then we would uh, we would wonder when we would see other people and these people present um a good face they they present uh very pleasant personalities they're uh some are intelligent uh, some seem so happy, and and we could begin to really wonder because we know ourself. We know ourself. We see our problems. We 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 see our fallings, our sins. But uh, if we didn't know this about people, if the Bible didn't tell us, we could actually then begin to develop. An inferiority complex. Then we could begin to think that uh, we're less than others. But but since the Bible tells us that what's going on in our nature is going on in everyone's nature, then we we realize well you know um, this person may show it differently and 
and and so forth, but we're all in the same boat. Every single one of us, every human being is, is in the same condition before God. We're all sinners. What a tremendous equalizer. And we we realize God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't look more favorably on anyone than another. He he's not impressed by man, the the uh, uh, morals of man, the thinking of man, the legs of man. None of these things impress God, and and so we begin to. Uh, develop a very even keel in our minds and and we're not all that impressed with our fellow man and and this is a very healthy mindset mentally we are uh, we are really in a good position to understand that um there are no great ones uh, the bible even tells us there's not a just man uh, that do with upon the earth that do with good and sinneth not, not even the true believers. We we realize we're all sinners too. We all have feet of clay. There there's no one that uh, has any more of a high and lofty position than anyone else. We're all in God's sight, standing on the very same ground, and and so this. Uh, this is the wonderful therapy of the Word of God. And uh, yes, it's horrible. It's the worst psychology um, if you're going by today's um, psychology books and, and our modern uh, psychiatric understanding. Oh, it, it is. It's horrible. And, and yet, actually it is the best there is there is no better mindset uh, than than when we uh accurately and and uh correctly understand who we are and who everyone else is and so god brings low he does <clears throat> also this is all part of our humility as he humbles us he does show us who we are. We're, we're sinners. And, and yet uh, God doesn't leave his people there. He lifts up. He exalts them. It, it, we read in Psalm 37, which is a really wonderful psalm, where God contrasts the child of God and the... Uh, the child of the world, the unsaved person, and repeatedly. And again and again, he speaks of the child of God receiving the eternal inheritance of, of the new earth. And again and again, he speaks of the ungodly man who will be cut off. And in verse 34 of Psalm 37, it says, Wait on Jehovah, and keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. And, and this exaltation that, that God promises is the lifting up finally and ultimately from uh, this world, from this uh, testing arena, from this uh, time uh, of these days when our faith is being tried we are brought low and we are humbled and and we are broken and uh, we have a broken and contrite heart that God has given us yet we have hope and the hope is always there the hope is never taken away that the Lord will look on us and he will lift us up he will exalt us into the heavenlies where our spirit essence is we're already there when we became a child of god we were seated in heavenly places in christ jesus 
but we're still here. We're still in the body, and we're awaiting the salvation of our body, the exaltation of our body. And so we wait on Jehovah. Um, now, let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 2. And it says in verse 8, he raises up the poor out of the dust. The reference to the dust, um, I think we can see pretty quickly what God has in mind in Genesis 2. And verse 7, as he created man, uh, he says, And Jehovah God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That is where we came from. We, we came from the ground. Our beginning is, is as the dust. We're uh, a part of the earth. As far as our uh, makeup, um, our, the ingredients that our, our uh, physical bodies came from the dirt, the ground of this world. And, and this is what God is saying. He raises up the poor out of the dust. There's a similar verse in Psalm 113. Psalm 113, beginning in verse 5. Who is like unto Jehovah our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He raises up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye Jehovah. And that... that uh, final verse there fits in very nicely with Hannah as Hannah was a barren woman and God made her to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children she she did go on to have more children after Samuel and um, and and so God um, in in uh, this psalm is giving us a little bit more information of what he does when he raises up the poor out of the dust. He sets him with princes, even with the princes of his people. You see, the raise up is part of the exaltation. And here is the poor, the needy, um, a beggar, someone who's nothing, a no one, a nobody. Where, who are we? Uh, really uh, to God we're we're just sinners we're uh, rebels and yet yet God takes us from the ground he raises us up uh, from our sinful condition and he makes us a child of God he exalts us exalts us into the heavenlies where we're seated with the Lord Jesus Christ who is king of kings and lord of lords and so since uh, he is a king, we become princes. We become of royal blood. We are a child of the king. We are children of God. And, and this is the glorious, um, uh, the glorious and, and wonderful things that God does for his people as, as he grants us his salvation. Now, we also have that other element to this verse uh, that, that uh, I think we'll see when we turn to Daniel 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That, so uh, God's people who sleep in the dust, who bodies have returned to the ground they've died physically and their physical body has uh, returned to dust and ashes god will raise their bodies up and resurrect them and grant them uh, new spiritual bodies and and this also is in view by raising up the poor out of the dust 
that's all part of the promise of God uh, that that he gives to each one of us. Um, let's uh, go back to 1 Samuel chapter 2 and um, look at the next part of verse 8. And lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. So notice the, the last few phrases um, have had to do with uh, being lifted up. In verse 7, he bringeth low and lifteth up. Verse 8, the first part, he raises up the poor. And and now the next phrase, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. These are, these are um, saying the same thing, restating it, emphasizing it again and again. And this is how God has written the Bible. He, he continually is telling us a truth and driving it home um, over and over again. And, and we, um, we uh, you know, uh, are, are not the best of learners, so, so the Lord uh, wants to make sure that we understand these things, that we, we have these points in, in our minds uh, that they're firm in our hearts, and he uh, he is reminding us again with this phrase: He lifteth up and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. Now the word beggar is also translated as poor and needy. For instance, in Psalm seventy-two, verses twelve and thirteen. It says there, for he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. The, this is the word beggar um, that's, that's found there a couple of times in, in uh, those couple of verses in the psalm. And, and we see that it is pointing to someone who is... Spiritually poor, we, we talked about that earlier back in verse 7, that Jehovah maketh poor and maketh rich. And so again, the beggar is a picture of someone who is poor in spirit and therefore blessed because they, um, they have the great spiritual riches of salvation. He lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. And the dung hill um, is is a word. Uh, the the word is dung. Uh, it's it's a word that's used only a few other times um, when the Bible speaks of dung gates um, in the city Jerusalem. They would have certain gates that um, that would have particular purposes and. And they had a dung gate, and that gate was for waste. All the waste of the city would go out that that particular gate, and and uh, it would have been very unpleasant. Uh, there would have been a heavy odor. It would have been dirty. The, but you know the, this is reality. This is the nature they uh, of uh, life in that day. They didn't have plumbing like we have it today and so they had to get rid of the refuse somehow they had to remove their waste and so they would put it out the dung gate and and uh, dung hills would develop and and so when God is using this type of language that he raises up the poor out of the dust no that's that's humbling to us it reminds us that we're uh, we're nobody, uh, you know. It, it's a reminder of who we are. We're a creature made of clay, and God is the creator. He's the potter. We're the pottery, and He formed us uh, as the potter forms the pot, and and that was humbling in itself. But now, furthermore. And lifteth up the beggar or the poor and needy from 
the dung hill from the place where the dung has gone forth and and you know when we uh we make that statement that Mr. Camping used to say all the time it's very accurate it's a true statement and the bible doesn't use this kind of language but we could say it's worthy of all acceptation that we are dirty rotten sinners we are spiritually filthy in our sin we are unclean as the lord would make the leper cry unclean unclean in his leprosy to warn people of his un- uncleanliness and and that is what we are spiritually there is no nice way of putting it there is no way of beautifying sin it is as filthy and as ugly as anything can be i'm sure um you and and i know i have too you've heard something in the news and you just grimace and and sometimes you feel sick to your stomach how could anyone do such a thing how could any man or woman how could anyone not only do it but how could they think it and and yet we realize now hold it we're we're sinners too and there's been some very ugly horrible things that have gone on right in our own minds and right in our own hearts and and we can't point the finger at anyone the the depths of depravity can go very low now the the bible does not teach total depravity because god has written his law in the hearts of man and that can never change or Uh, A man's heart can be seared, but he can never erase the law of God. It's always there, and that would prevent utter and total depravity in any person. But certainly the depths, the, the deep, deep, dark sin that we can go down into is, is very, um, thick and and in its depths and and uh, it there doesn't seem to be a bottom we can go deeper and further down in ugliness uh, on and on that this uh, appears to be the case and it is the dunghill the dunghill spiritually speaking of our depravity not total depravity but mankind is depraved we are mad in our sins and and this is where god finds us remember now it's also true that we immediately think um i'd like to make this point hopefully before we close we we do think of the most ugly things that that uh that we've heard of when we think of um uh, of of sins and association with dung something so vile and filthy yet yet uh, there there is all you know sin itself is vile and filthy even if we don't think it is and in philippians um god moves the apostle paul to to list uh, some some um, sins that really involve pride and high-mindedness. In Philippians 3, it says in verse 4, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. He, he, we can hear uh, him being puffed up. His chest is expanding as he says these things. 
concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And here, that dung pile uh, expands. It's, it's not just the most ugly things, but sins of pride, religious sins, sins where, where our doctrine and our gospel um, in, in our church, in our denomination, when, when the believers used to go to church, these sins that puffed us up, that exalted us to places we had no business being because God had not done the lifting up, they are all but dung too. And God has found many in that position. That's where the Apostle Paul was, a Pharisee, a uh, uh, Hebrew, the Hebrews, a zealous uh, uh, religious man, someone who was greatly involved in doing works in order to have a right relationship with God. It was all dung, and God found him in that dung and lifted him up as a beggar, a poor and needy man, really, and Paul came to realize that and lifted him out of the dunghill. And all God's people realize this is where we come from. And no matter what our background is, ultimately, it was all but dung. You've been listening to eBible Fellowship's Chris McCann with his continuing studies into the book of 1 Samuel. These studies are heard every Monday through Friday night at this very same time over Pal Talk, over Skype, over eBible Fellowship's webcast audio, or over the phone. Lord willing, we'll have another Bible study for you tomorrow night into the book of 1 Samuel. And until then, may the Lord's perfect will be done. Good night.